Everybody's getting excited. Strategies. Pit it to win it, mostly. Uh, we maintain our placing if we finish. Good. So Who's starting? Me. It's mainly survival. What time did you get the car back together last night, and what did you have to do to it? Midnight. We changed all of the output and input shaft seals on the transaxle. Got done at midnight. Feels great. We actually walked over here when they are in the middle of it and there was the seats were out, the floorboard was off, skid plates, rear of the car. It was pretty impressive that they got this all back together and running and pretty cool. So excited for them today. All right, last night I heard you doing a lot of uh, radio communications testing. How are you feeling about our communications today? Um, I think they're going to do great today. Perfect. What's the importance of the communication to Pitts? So if they were coming in the pits, they could tell us that they had a flat luck, on the radio and that we'd know and we could help them change it. But if they lose their radio, they, we couldn't get, get to them. Well, sounds like communications are all set. Bridget's got the uh, the main pit uh, radio dialed in there. Okay, so we're here at the start line of the Bora 300. Official start time is going to be 9.05. They're lining up cars. How they qualified. So this was fast qualifier, 74. So 30 seconds, and I just wanted to say real quick, there are 50 volunteers here with Bora working today. 50 people volunteered their time, and not just today. They did it to mark the course, to clean the course, to take entry. So many volunteers make this happen, along with BJ and Laura. It's pretty neat that they all spend their time doing this. So Dusty B and, and number two are both starting in class one in a UTV. So T, so T995 was actually fast qualifiers of the day. They set the, uh, the fastest qualifying time in their UTV four-wheel drive. They did a heck of a job. They're not starting in front of all the trucks, but they are actually the fast qualifiers.
So Cook Off Road, their car is actually gonna be in the SEMA show coming up here in a few months. So you can see we have a lot of vehicles running, um, lots of UTVs. We went through the uh, unlimited class trucks, buggies, and then we went through a bunch of UTVs and now we're gonna go to some more of the, the limited class or people that had a truck and entered it in Sportsman. Um, there's, some, there's some really fast cars back here, some Ultra Fours, Jason and his Class 8. So there, there's a lot of stuff back here that's, uh, that's pretty fast in the back too. That's Jason with Parabellum Racing. He has his own YouTube channel. So go check it out. Good luck today, guys. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you. We appreciate you. We'll see you out there on the court. Okay, instead of watching all these cars take off, what I'm going to do is try and get out to checkpoint five. There's some stadium jumps out there. Hopefully, I can catch those fast guys. We also have Sean with the On Point Drone Works out there filming for us and he'll be kind of in a real rough section coming up the hill and then kelly's going to be at some other uh jump spots too so excited for all the coverage we're going to have today so bj's talking to every racer and he's kind of reminding them it's a long race don't lose this thing in the first 15 miles but drive safe drive smart okay as i'm running back here just a good looking class five bug that's street legal not a racer just a play buggy but This is a good looking rig with an Ecotech. Okay guys, I can hear the first car. My guess is it's the Ultra 4 still, and it looks like he's gonna be in first. It does not sound like Chris, so I don't think anybody got around anybody. And uh, here he comes. Got hear him coming up the valley. Both of those vehicles uh, drove really smart and checked up, so I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to get to where I can see a little bit more country right now. Right, guys if you remember that that UTV started a long ways back that was the fast 
fast qualifier. They started a long ways back and they may be they may be leading the race right now on time. It is It's 1004. I think they're leading the race. So they've passed a lot of people. Um, what, that's an incredible lap time so far. Now they have six to go, so that there, there's a race in a long time. That's a lot of race left, but they're moving out right now. So. Okay guys. I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky. I hear sirens going, maybe we'll get a pass on camera. Oh yeah, we are gonna get a cast on camera unless he does it right before. Okay, so we have a UTV catching an eight truck. Hopefully when they slow down right here, he'll hear him. Oh yeah, see him get out of the way as soon as he slowed down, could hear him. Okay, old guy story. That class eight is what, that would have been a real fast truck and a contender for the overall when we first started racing with my dad out in like 1994. So uh, pretty cool seeing that thing out here. It's, it's neat. Sly McFly putting on a little bit of time there, working his way up through the dust. That's pretty cool to see. Okay, so that truck that just went by, he started in Sportsman. It's his first time racing this truck. He just got it wrapped, he just bought it and got it home out of Texas and he's in his first race in it. And being only the second race in our new one car, it's it's just different. It's uh, I don't know what he's actually raced before, but it, it's difficult racing these trucks. So um, he was coming up to the dust there and it looked like he went off the course and he did, but that's how hard it is to get through the dust. We've all been there. Everyone that races has been there. All of a sudden you can't tell where you are. You just have to check up and stop. All right, that's Jason with Parabellum. He's, uh, he's having a great race so far. That's a really new truck. They're still working some stuff out with it. He started in the sportsman class. Um, end of the first lap here, he's still right there with the rest of the sportsmen. So he's running a good race and uh, just to finish is gonna be real important for a new team. Get the kinks worked out of that car and uh, kind of move forward. So great, great job getting a clean first lap in there. Look, he had uh, good spares in the rear. I didn't see any flats. Yeah. <laughs> 
So something pretty neat about today, not only is it race day, it's National Public Lands Day. How cool is that? We're out here using our public lands for what we want to use it for, and we can also celebrate what everybody else wants to use it for. So there's enough of this open for all of us to use. But what we have to do is all of us have to do our part in cleaning it up. And so on National Public Lands Day, um, Tread Lightly has sponsored a dumpster at the pits. Now, anything that any of these pit teams, these crews, these chase teams find out in the desert today, they can throw in the back of the truck and they can take it back into Bora and throw it into the dumpster. So thank you very much, Tread Lightly, for sponsoring that, for helping with our public lands, keeping them clean. It's pretty cool. So I'm kind of in the middle of this loop and I could catch them at like race mile eight and race mile like 50, and I think. So it's like a 55 mile lap. And then they go out and do this big loop. So you can kind of catch all the cars. There's a car coming down over there, if you can see that. A couple of them actually. So they're almost done with their lap and then they'll Sounds like someone's on the horn too, so trying to make a pass. So yeah, so pretty cool country. You can get up on these high um, points really easy. There's access roads to all this um, and it's open open land so you can ride all these. And um, just really beautiful country.
on this hill because we have Chris German reeling everybody in and we got a bunch of people right here. So this is pretty cool. Uh, Ultra 4 is still in the lead. Um, he is flying. Oh guys, this is awesome. I don't know if he's leading anymore. Got some lap traffic here that Chris German's gonna have to deal with. Oh, they're dipping under that hill. I'm not going to be able to see the actual pass. But we should be able to see him going up that back side of that hill with uh, Chris German out in front. Okay, Chris just passed him. Hopefully we can see that on camera because that was awesome. Okay, so now we have coming YouTube, two UTVs. Colton is absolutely flying. off road absolutely getting it so second lap in for them so a lot of race to go there's six laps total so no reason to get crazy so they're they run smart races from what I've seen <laughs> Sly McFly, they're still cruising along. They're uh, putting up a great race so far, and that's getting close to the end of their second lap. Do you have a copy? 3909, mile marker 48. Copy that, 3909. We're ready for you. 3909, you have a copy? Yeah, I hear you. You have both first and second place race leaders about a minute behind you so right now they are actually passing russell i heard sirens going everything's going there so it's getting real busy for uh, russell and mark driving right now so they got a lot of fast cars lapping them so they just need to stay safe and kind of get out of the way
Colton was having a heck of a race up until this point. He started having an issue with the bolts on his brake rotors backing out on all four corners. He ended up having to spend a bunch of time in pro pit and it really cost him a chance for the overall. If you listen, you can actually hear it as he drives by. All right, I believe this is the start of the fourth lap and Chris German appears to be first car on course. So he got around the Ultra 4 in the in the pits or somewhere. I, I don't know where. So Germ, Chris German got around. He's first on course right now. Um, great race. I'm excited to see how far back that Ultra 4 is. So here comes Chris on some fast stuff. Chris and Don German's truck works well everywhere. It really likes this stuff though. Okay, so it's a long way out there, but you can see them both running to our right now. And Chris is in that UTV's dust, but he is catching him hard. Let's kind of watch this for a second. Oh yeah, look at Chris reeling him in right there. I hope you can see this on camera. So Chris is about 20 feet behind him, 10. He's right on him, must be on the horn. That's a power line road. And Chris just got around him. So first on course is flying and passing again. Okay, heading back to main pits. I'm gonna go do some recording there. Kelly and Sean are both still out uh, running the drone and another GoPro. So hopefully they're getting some great footage. Um, Chris German is your leader. He, is, uh, he has definitely moved up into the number one spot on time and also um, physically on the course. He's a long ways ahead of everybody, it looks like to me at this point. Um, of course, that's all unofficial, I don't even have a clock. So, uh, it looks like he's having a heck of a race. So, the Ultra 4 that qualified first and was running in first ahead of Chris, uh, even at the end of the third lap there, he is broke. He broke leaving main pits, something happened, and I waited there about 15 minutes to see if he was gonna get it going and get back out to check one, and he didn't. So it's something more than a flat tire anyway. So uh, heading back to main pits, maybe we can find him. Uh, maybe we can find some people trying to patch something together and see if they can finish the race. Guys, honestly, it's really cool The Tread Lightly paid for that dumpster. And it's really cool in just 30 seconds here, I was able to, to get that much trash, get it out of our desert. So, too beautiful out here. Too beautiful out here to have it all full of junk. Okay, we found another team from Grants Pass, Oregon here. And they, they were unable to finish and it looked like they had some fuel issues. But how did it run up until? It was great. We were super happy with the performance and all the upgrades we did. It upgraded the handling 10 times compared to what it was. Just some sort of fuel issue, and that was it for us. Great looking truck. 